Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram struggled for the Pelicans in this one. And guess what? They still got the win due to Trey Murphy and Jonas Valanciunas stepping up. But there is more to it than that. I'll explain in today's episode of Lockdown Pelicans. Let's go. <laughs> You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with y'all on this Saturday, but this is really Friday's show since we missed the Thursday episode of Locked on Pelicans. So we're making it up to you here. We're also going to have a show tomorrow after the Pelicans play on the second night of a back-to-back against the Chicago Bulls tonight. We have a great update for that, actually, a surprising update for that. And I'll let you know coming up here in a moment on Locked on Pelicans, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Yet. You want to support the channel, be coming every day or listen Monday through Friday because we are the number one Pelicans podcast breaking this team down like nobody else in the ways that you want to hear. We're going to break down this win over the San Antonio Spurs. Today's episode of Locked On Pelicans brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase. So this game, a win over the San Antonio Spurs, 121-106, a little bit closer, a little bit tighter than you would have liked it to be. But look, a win is a win at the end of the day. And this win was interesting because Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson just didn't really, it doesn't feel like they did much, right? Zion had just 12 points. He was just four of nine, took only nine shots, went to the line five times. Four rebounds, seven assists. Keep that number in mind in a minute. Brandon Ingram was three of 14. He started one of 11 from the field in this one. 14 points, perfect eight of eight from the line, 0 for four from three, five rebounds, seven assists, four turnovers. CJ McCollum, a little bit better here, 19 points, but he was eight of 18, including one of eight from three. Eight assists for him. These guys, the big three, just didn't have it going in this game for the Pelicans whatsoever. And so when you struggle like that, even against a bottom-feeding team like the San Antonio Spurs without Victor Wembanyama playing, you very much could lose. And I don't think the Pelicans were really ever in danger, particularly in the second half of losing this game per se, but you didn't get a runaway victory that you certainly would have preferred, certainly would have liked, and that would have made all of our lives easier, gotten us out of the Smoothie King Center a little bit early on a Friday night. But a win's a win, and that's important. And I think what you saw in this game was some of the depth really stepping up. And let's start with Trey Murphy. Because of guys off the bench, he played the most minutes. This was making his return, the first action he's getting this season. And he played 22 minutes, and the dude played well. 18 points, 7 of 13 shooting. He was 4 of 10 from 3 Three rebounds, one assist, no turnovers, did everything here. He had a couple of layups, he had a monster dunk off of Zion, and the three-point shooting, this is what we thought we were going to see from Trey. If he's doing this in his first game action, watch out, NBA, this dude's going to make an immediate impact and he's going to elevate this Pelicans team. You know, the team is still kind of figuring some things out. They're still integrating guys. But this one gave you a very clear idea of what they want to be doing and who they really want to be. They tried to play fast in transition and shoot a lot of threes in this one. They didn't take a ton of threes. They're still working on that when you have three, four non-shooters in your starting lineup. But overall... Getting a guy like Trey who spaces the court. There were a couple times, particularly in the second half when you were watching this one, where Brandon Ingram tried to drive, and they're doing this by design. It's Brandon Ingram trying to drive from the three-point line, and if you look at it, he's taking a step to his left. So he's cutting more into the middle and then trying to drive straight down the lane. What this is hopefully also going to do is pull a defender away from the perimeter off of Trey Murphy to play a help defender to try and get there. And if that guy does that, all B.I. has to do is just kind of kick the ball to Trey, who's standing to his left, not far from him, on the three-point line, and that's a wide-open shot for Trey Murphy. But when you saw them do this multiple times in this game with Brandon Ingram, that defender, very often Jeremy Sohan, one of their better defenders that they have, didn't bite. 
because he knew he had to stay on Trey Murphy. And it gave Brandon Ingram room to at least operate and attack the basket. He wasn't converting. He struggled with his shot in this game. But at least you see the spacing and the idea behind it. If the fact is a guy is going to stick to Trey Murphy, that's a very good sign for the Pelicans and what they want to accomplish and the team that they want to try and be. That's court spacing right there. It's called court gravity, right? He's sucking a defender to him. He's pulling, I should say probably is a better word for it, pulling a defender to him. That creates space. Trey was already on the scouting report in this game. I love it. That's what you want to see. Fact is, he played pretty good defense, grabbed a couple of boards, and can uh, you know attack closeouts, can get into the lane and score. We forget that he was in the dunk contest last year, and you saw the dunk that he threw down off of a Zion double team. Trey made an immediate impact in this game, and that's hopefully what we're going to see going forward. It also allowed guys like Herb Jones to make plays too. You know, with the other guys struggling, you need someone to hit shots. Herb Jones did it. He was three of four from deep in this one. Four rebounds, 17 points. That's really good for him. That's a big performance. We'll save Jonas Valanciunas for the next segment coming up here. But when other guys are struggling to score to have these role players step up, and they look, they got easy looks because of the space that Brandon Ingram and Zion and CJ created for them. There's a reason CJ, Zion, and B.I. all had seven or more assists. Seven for Ingram, seven for Zion, eight for for C.J. McCollum. They were impacting the game with their court gravity. And we'll break it down a little bit more, but I mean, you looked at this and the Spurs' game plan was to limit those guys, was to wall Zion off at the rim. And if if you do that, you're content with other people beating you. Well, that meant Herb Jones was getting wide open threes. He was taking them. He was making them. That meant Trey was getting open looks, including some deep threes that he took, which are even a bigger court spacer. He took those made those, right? Jordan Hawkins in limited run, they knew he was part of the game plan, made one of two from three. Najee with a crazy score at the end of the second half. These guys stepped up because they were getting good looks from the star players being the focal point of the defense. That is what you love to see in this game from those players. Playing off the stars like that, the stars giving them assists when they realized the shot's not there for them. Not trying to force things too much. At times, yes, but overall, not too bad. You know, Zion taking just nine shots. Trey took more than him. CJ took more than him. Brandon Ingram took more than him. Valanciunas took more than him. Herb took one fewer than him, right? That's one, two, three, four. He was fifth in terms of shot attempts. That should never be the case for Zion, but it was the right thing to do here. Dish the ball. Use your, your, you know, your playmaking for others. And they opened things up for Jonas Valanciunas in a very big way. And I want to talk about that because it actually comes from a Locked on Pelicans Insiders question too. Let's talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to talk to you about FanDuel because as the weather gets colder, the NFL and NBA offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get a $150, uh, get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. It's 150 bucks if your team wins. Feeling good about the Pelicans going to the Chicago Bulls? Zion's playing the second night of a back-to-back, supposedly. If you think they're going to win, bet a $5 money line bet. Pels win, you win that, and you win 150 bucks. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. I love that the app is super easy to use, and it shows me all of the betting options that I want, the spreads, the player props, the over-unders, the same-game parlays, to get an even bigger payout. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get in on the NFL action, the NBA action this season. FanDuel official partner of the NFL and the official sportsbook of Locked On. I don't know why if you're watching on YouTube that the camera here is blurry. Okay, there we go. That was kind of weird. But thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for you on the number one Pelicans podcast, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. We're going to look at a bunch of X's and O's stuff coming up here in a moment. We've talked trades. We've talked just general topics around the team. We cover it all. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you want to support the channel, two things you can do. Become an everydayer. Listen Monday through Friday. A number of y'all came up to me at the game on Friday and said you were an everydayer, and I love it. That means the world to me. I appreciate y'all so much. So listen Monday through Friday, never miss an episode, even on the weekend here. I'm giving you two weekend shows to make up for missing one show. We get bonus Locked On Pelicans here, completely free for y'all every single day. 
And if you really want to support the channel, we have the Locked On Pelicans Insiders group. Subtext link is down below. Click on that. Sign up with your phone number. You get a 14-day free trial. It's five. It's $4.99 a month after that. But you can text me. You got a question? Text it to me directly. Just text me your thoughts. I see all of them. I try and respond to all of y'all. And I use it in the show. When we do mailbags and things, I ask the insiders group first. But that is a pretty influential group. And I really enjoy being able to interact with everybody when it comes to all of that. So give it a shot. If you don't like it, just cancel. It's totally cool. The show's still going to be free in five days a week for y'all. So this this is a perfect segue because Giannis Valanciunas was great in this game. This is why I said you can't really trade him for someone that's worse than him because there are nights where he carries you. 24 points, 12 rebounds, a steal, two blocks, which happened on the same possession, and one turnover. He was 9 of 12 from the field, 24 points. That's two points per shot attempt. That's insanely good efficiency. Seven of ele- uh, Sorry, 6 of 7, there we go, from the free throw line. He was good, really good in a game that they needed him to be because the defensive game plan was to take Zion Williamson away first and foremost. Second part was take Brandon Ingram away. Third part was then, you know, you'll deal with C.J. McCollum beating you, but his shot was off, one of eight in this game. It was Jonas who carried them and paced them and punished, punished the San Antonio Spurs, you know, without Victor Wembanyama in the starting center, they're losing a lot of length there too. So this worked really well because of the way they were using Jonas Valanciunas. It was very simple and it can be very effective. And I got asked in the Locked On Pelicans Insiders group, why when they run a Zion Williamson, Jonas Valanciunas pick and roll, does Jonas usually just try and get downhill and roll to the hoop? Shouldn't he be picking and popping? Because if he rolls to the hoop after setting a screen and Zion's also coming off that screen going downhill, doesn't that pull a defender? Yes and no. It does a couple of things. And so this gives me the opportunity to talk about it here. When you run that very simple action, it's just a simple pick and roll, and Jonas dives and rolls to the basket, he is bringing an extra defender with him and he's in close proximity to Zion. What you saw, and you saw them do that action a ton in this game, but what worked was whenever the defender went over to Zion and they double teamed him that way, it just meant that Jonas was open and Zion dished an assist to him. And that's what was so effective. Let me see if I can pull up who gave him assist in this game. I'm going to have to mute this really quickly. Um, And it was Zion just dishing assist after assist after assist to him. Oh, wait, I can pull him up a different way. And that really worked. He was hitting him in those short short rolls very easily, just getting downhill. I can't pull it up a different way. I'll pull these later. Um, Getting him downhill and then Jonas's defender comes over to Zion. He just dumps it off to him and boom, it's an easy Jonas Valanciunas two points. That happened multiple times in this game. It's designed to just actually get him. They haven't been just working on that together. And Zion realized it just wasn't his night and played really smart basketball, in my opinion, by dumping it off to Jonas. That's what you want to see. Same for Brandon Ingram. Same for, at times, CJ. Using Jonas Valanciunas as a role man and having him be there. The other thing is, if they miss, he can grab that board and put it back up, right? Right? You don't have to necessarily hit him in the pick and roll either. You can just get down there. And if a guy comes over and leaves him open in the dunker spot, just kind of dump the ball off to him. Don't even need to hit him on the move in the pick and roll. And then he goes up and he scores. And the San Antonio Spurs were probably very content to let Jonas Valanciunas beat them. We talk about this when we talk about the Pelicans defense at times, right? You take away opponent stars. And if a role player like goes off because they're wide open because you're double teaming their star player, Like you just shrug your shoulders and you just go, okay, whatever. That guy stepped up, they beat us, but the game plan was sound. This is like the definition of process over results, right? You know, if it was someone like Najee Marshall going for like 30, let's say, you know, the Spurs are like, whatever, that doesn't happen. It's not a big deal. We lost, but what can you do about kind of a fluke game from a player? The thing with Jonas is he's he's good and he can do this and this shouldn't necessarily surprise you as much but they know what they're doing the other thing that sometimes Jonas can do when they run him in those like short roll pick and roll situations is just clear space out with his body just by moving down and kind of like going like that right arms out pushing people out of the way can create space for Zion Williamson too can create space for Brandon Ingram and that often happens that's why what they've been how they've been using him in pick and roll situations is not necessarily setting a screen but you use him in dribble handoffs where he has the ball 
Zion comes kind of curling around him. He, Jonas hands the ball off to him. And, you know, with those long arms, Zion's back behind you. That's like three feet of space all of a sudden that Zion has from a defender. And then Jonas kind of puts his body in and moves downhill to just clear more room out. And it gives Zion a full head of steam and a running start to go to the basket and score. That's why when you see those games where Jonas has like four or five assists, a lot of it is just kind of on those very simple actions. So one of the things that the coaching staff is doing, James Borrego, and I told you this if you're an everydayer before the season started, was I think they can use Jonas Valanciunas much more efficiently. That was really weird. Um, and that is a very good thing and something that they need to do more of. And they've started to this season. So you're seeing him be a much more integral part. And if you use him like this, okay, he fits your offense better. Doesn't really fit what they're trying to do defensively as much, but fits the offense better and kind of is making it so that you can't trade him away. You know, I think at a certain point we need to have a discussion about, you know, what, what do you do with him in the off season? Do you resign him? Do you try and trade him before then? Are you willing to let him walk? I don't think so. So if you're not willing to do that, he's probably going to command more money from this team than potentially elsewhere. He's not going to take a cheaper deal. I don't know what his market will necessarily be, but something to keep in mind. He's been playing really good basketball for the Pelicans recently too. And I liked what they were, how they were using him. Just very smart. You could very clearly see kind of the shift with the offensive game plan to include him more in this game. And that's a great adjustment by the coaching staff to recognize that and realize this was a big Jonas game. And this is the type of stuff that they should run given what the Spurs game plan was. Pop top doesn't overthink things. Take out, take away, not take out, take away the best player. And it's kind of as simple as that. Let other guys beat you. And the other guys in this game did beat the San Antonio Spurs. Again, closer than it should have been. But what can you do when guys have like completely cold nights from the field, which is what happened here. The Pelicans shot 32% from three on just 31 attempts. You know, didn't shoot particularly well overall. Didn't have turnovers, but, you know, Spurs weren't missing things. So they couldn't get out and run particularly like they really wanted to would have liked to have so that definitely hurt him especially given all like some of the turnovers and things like that a lot of bad passes that were not live ball turnovers but dead ball turnovers that kind of slows things down so they did a good job offensively kind of reacting adjusting in the moment what wasn't good was the three-point uh shooting for the san antonio spurs because that was good The defensive game plan seemed off. Let's talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm here to tell you about game time because buying tickets to events, sporting events, comedy shows, theater, whatever it might be, can be a frustrating experience. You know, you you look at the price online and all of a sudden you go to buy the ticket and it's like double because of hidden fees. Are these even good seats? Is this the right time to buy? Should you wait till it's closer to the event? You don't need to worry about that with Game Time because Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind when you purchase. You get to see the view from your seats before you buy, so you know that you're getting the tickets that you want. They have an all in price up front, so there's no hidden fees. You can buy tickets very easily in just two taps. And with the Game Time guarantee, it means you're always going to get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So just buy the tickets now. If the tickets drop in price, they're going to give you money. You're you're making money at that point when it comes to game time. You don't need to worry about trying to time it correctly. So download the Game Time app and take the guesswork out of buying tickets. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. We just made it cheaper to go to a Pels game. Terms apply again. Create an account. Redeem code locked on NBA. L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, even on Saturday, a makeup show. We'll have a show on Sunday for you. Then a big one on Mondays. We get ready for the in-season tournament quarterfinals. That's going to be fun. Covering everything you want to know about the New Orleans Pelicans here. The number one Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Support the channel by becoming an everydayer. Do me a favor. Tell a friend about the show. Get them clued into what's going on with this Pelicans team because they're playing some good basketball right now. They're getting healthy with Trey Murphy coming back. This is going to be a lot of fun. What wasn't a lot of fun was the Pelicans defense in this game. This one was bad. This one was bad. The San Antonio Spurs stayed in this game because of their three-point shooting. 
They took 39 attempts, hit 16 of them. That's six more threes than the Pelicans. So that's 18 points that they won in that area. That's a lot. That's a significant number in a game that felt closer than it should be. But the Pelicans did a very poor job of defending the three-point line. That needs to change. You know, they don't take enough threes to get into like a three-point shootout with opponents. They can be a good three-point shooting team. Trey back is going to help. Certainly, CJ back is going to help too. You still have Jordan Hawkins, but you can't be losing the three-point battle every single night. Now, if CJ makes a couple more, you know, that this changes things, I think. If Hawkins takes a couple more shots, isn't like run out of there by the Spurs defense, again, they're very well coached, that changes things. So there's reasons why some of this happened, and it's understandable, and that's why I'm not really freaking out about it in this one, but they did a poor job of running the San Antonio Spurs off the three-point line. You know, to be honest, in this game, the Pelicans' energy level just wasn't it. You know, watching this game, did they feel like a step slow? Did they feel like they were like truly ready to compete or something like that? Like, no. Like, the vibes were off from the start in this game, it really felt like, as the San Antonio Spurs for much of the first half were leading or just keeping in it with the New Orleans Pelicans. That shouldn't be the case for one of the worst teams in the league that is missing their best player in Victor Wembinyama. The Pelicans kind of played down to their opponent in this one, and that really came to defending the three-point line. The closeouts were lazy. They were sloppy or they were too much. Zion, in particular, was really bad about that. I think his defense has been decent this season. It most definitely wasn't in this game. Same for Brandon Ingram, too. No one was really competing other than Herb Jones, who had some amazing defensive plays that just don't show up in the stat sheet. But overall, their energy level on the defensive side of the ball wasn't correct, and they need to come better, basically, when it comes to that sort of thing. Because it allows teams to get back in it. If you have poor closeouts and it's going to lead to open three-point shots or them just driving to the basket, forcing the defense to rotate, then another easy pass for a dunk or a layup. New Orleans can't make it that easy on opponents by playing lazy. The West is too difficult. Games are not going to always be simple to win. You don't want to throw a game away this season because... You're just being lazy on defense. That's got to change. They were bad in this one, and it kept the San Antonio Spurs in this game, and that's what what did it. So let's quickly look ahead to tonight's game. Second night of a back-to-back against the Chicago Bulls. Pre-game, Willie Green said that he's expecting that Zion Williamson will play. It'll be the first back-to-back that Zion has played this season. That's actually like very exciting, very very good. No CJ in this one. I don't think we'll see Trey Murphy in this one either. But if you get Zion and Brandon Ingram, I feel good. And maybe B.I. will take the night off. We'll see. You know, I think I feel very good about their chances to win. The Bulls are bad. They need to kind of implode that blow up that team, basically. This is one that it looked like maybe New Orleans like, wouldn't win. And you're kind of punting this game. But if Zion's going to play, they should be able to get this victory and continue to build some momentum. I will say this. If Zion does play... That says something about where he's at conditioning-wise in terms of game shape and all of that. You know, the Pelicans on this stretch right now are going to be playing three games in four days. You know, they played Friday. They immediately got on a plane, went to Chicago, played a game. They're going to have Sunday off, and then they're going to play the quarterfinal game on the road in Sacramento. That's three games in four days. And if Zion does all of that, that says something about where he is physically, conditioning with his body, all of those things. That's a very... Very encouraging sign, in my opinion. I think that's going to be good. Hopefully the Pelicans can get this win, build some momentum going into their in-season tournament quarterfinal game on the road against the Sacramento Kings. And I know we're all excited about that. You want them to win the in-season tournament, don't you? I want them to win the in-season tournament too. I love the in-season tournament. I've been a big proponent of it. Also love the City Edition jerseys this year, the black jerseys, the skeleton for this team. If you watched my show on Black Friday, if you're an everyday or said they should probably just rebrand to that for a couple of years. I think it's that good. Or even just use the regular Pelicans logo with that kind of black neon and purple. I just dig it. Like, I really like the look. I actually just bought a shirt for it that I'll probably wear at some point this weekend for one of these podcasts that we're going to be recording. Thought that was awesome. All right. We got big shows coming up Monday. Rest of the week for y'all. Get you set for a couple of key pivotal games for the New Orleans Pugs. We'll have a bonus show tomorrow covering this. My way of saying, like, my bad that I had to miss the show due to personal reasons. 
but we're back. We got the show out right now. Enjoy the win. Trey Murphy back. Gotta love it. Jonas Valanciun is stepping up. It's totally awesome. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. This has been the Lockdown Pelicans Podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And I'll be back with you all tomorrow after the Bulls game.